sin. It's one of those Bible words, those church words, that we don't really hear much outside of church, outside of the Bible. So in this video, we want to talk about what is sin. And we want to talk about lawnmowers, but that's getting ahead of myself. Hey, my name is John, and welcome to the 5-Minute Bible Study. In this particular uh, video, we're going to talk about this idea of sin, specifically what is sin. And the Bible really has a short answer to that. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, it says this. It says, whoever practices sin practices lawlessness. There you go, the short answer. And that word translated sin in that passage is really an old archery term. And it has the idea of missing the mark, uh, missing the target. What's the target? Well, the target is law. And so to sin is to miss the target of the law. And hence, sin is lawlessness. All right, then. The follow-up question to that is, well, where does the law come from? Like, who makes the rules? Why should I feel obligated? Why should you, why should anyone feel obligated to, to you know, keep the law? And since obviously we're in a religious context, we're talking about the Bible, church. Well, are those rules, all those, are those laws just like arbitrary religious rules? And sometimes we think of them that way. Sometimes they feel that way, but they're not. They're not arbitrary, and that's where lawnmowers come in. Now, imagine if I go outside to mow the lawn, and I, I get my lawnmower out, and I realize, oh man, my gas can's out of gas, uh, and I don't really feel like going buying more gas, and gas has gotten expensive anyhow, and you know, gas is just a clear liquid, so no worries. I'll just go get a cup of water, and I will just put water in it. It's clear liquid. It should work just fine, right? So I pour some, some water in my gas tank on my lawnmower, and, and I'm like, oh man, I haven't you know, added any oil to this lawnmower for a while. You know what? I don't have any oil. No worries. I'll just use some chocolate syrup because, hey, it's a kind of a brown, thick liquid. It's about the same consistency as, as oil. I'll just put some chocolate syrup in where the oil goes, and I do that. How's that going to work, right? Like, try to start that lawnmower, and, and it's just not going to work so well. True? Why? Because the lawnmower is not made to run on water and chocolate syrup. The lawnmower is made to run on gas and oil. And that's very much like how you are and I am in relationship to, the, to God's law. You see, those rules aren't arbitrary. Where did they come from in the first place? Is it, is it like there's like this, this law that's even over God and, and God's kind of obligated to keep it? Is it like there's this law that God could have just, he could have made the laws anything? Like if God had said, you know what? Cowardice is right and courage is wrong. Could God have done that? Uh, malice is right and, and compassion and kindness is wrong. Could God could have just made these laws however he wanted to make them? Are they arbitrary? And the answer is no, they're not arbitrary. Why not? Well, because the laws uh, flow from God's character. They flow from who God is. They're not above God. They're not outside of God. They're a reflection of who God is. So God's laws flow from God's character. Um, and so when God says courage is right and cowardice is wrong, it's because God is courageous. When God says kindness and compassion is right and malice and uh, hostility is wrong, it's because God is kind. They flow from God's character. All the laws work that way. Now here's where it gets really important and really interesting. When God first made you, when God first made humans, when God made us, how did he make human beings? Well, Genesis chapter 1 says that God made us human beings. How? In his image. God made us in his image, which means this. You're made to function how God functions. I'm made to function how God functions. We're made to be like him. In other words, we're made to function a certain way. So just like the lawnmower is made to run on gas and oil, not water and chocolate syrup, you're made to run on kindness. You're made to run on compassion. You're made to operate with courage. You're made to operate with truthfulness. Why? Because you're made in God's image, so you're made to be like God. You're designed to work the way God works. And since God is a certain way, you're made to be a certain way. And therefore, when we sin, 
and we break God's laws, it means we go against God's character and we ruin ourselves. That's the way sin works. That's why choosing not to sin is the best decision you could ever make in your life. That's why choosing to follow God's laws is the best thing for you and for me because it describes how we're designed to function. This is in your best interest because you're designed to function like God functions. When my kids were small, uh, I, I used to try to help them understand this framework, just to put it in their mind so that as they grew, they had this understanding of right and wrong in a way to shape their life. And so, for example, when four or five-year-old Jeff would lie or four or five-year-old Ashley would lie, uh, I wanted to help them understand why lying was wrong and truth-telling was right. And so um, I would ask them, Jeff, Ash, do you know why lying is wrong and why you should tell the truth? No, Daddy. Well, because God is truth. And you're made in God's image, therefore you're made to be truth. And so when you lie, you, you go against God's character and offend Him, but you also destroy yourself. So it's always best that you choose to tell the truth. That's how God's laws work, and it works that way with everything. Why is um, purity right and impurity wrong? Well, because God is pure, and you're made in God's image, so you're made to be pure. Why is faithfulness good and wise and right and unfaithfulness wrong? Well, because God is faithful, and you're made in God's image, so you're made to be faithful, faithful to your spouse, and faithful to your responsibilities, right? That's the way it works. So, in short, what is sin? Sin is lawlessness. And law, the law comes from God and reflects who he is, and it describes how you're designed to function. That's why it's always smart and always good and always wise and always healthy for us to choose to listen to God's law and choose not to sin. Hey, thanks for joining me on the 5-Minute Bible Study. If you're new here and haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe right up here. And I'm going to put some other videos up on the screen over here that uh, might be really helpful to you. I'm going to put one video that's specifically about how in Christ we are free from sin. So you can check that out right up here. God bless you guys, and I will see you in the next video.